All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome out once again to USA Siege. It's time for the Champion Series, uh, the second play day of the week. And boy, oh boy, do we have a nice little setup. I'm Slayzilla, joined with CDAPS. And man, we are ready to get into this Nomads versus Homeland Academy game. Let's talk about the bands. Yeah, the bands are about to come on screen real quick. Homeland Academy taking the first map out of the pool, and it will be Coastline, so no Dust 2 of Siege coming out on display. And Nomads responds back by saying, we don't want the typical T3 map of Clubhouse to come out. That will be removed accordingly. Absolutely. So, so long to you. Next uh, maps they did pick are going to be Oregon and Cafe. Theme Park got banned. Villa got banned. And then finally, that leaves us with a finale of a map consulate so we do only have this one series tonight so uh hopefully it's going to be a great game and you know what with these two teams it really is looking to be just that yeah it should be really exciting oregon is always really fun to watch because it's the new map in the pool so people are still kind of figuring out how to play it so with how everything works out we'll probably get to see some uh, fun strats come on display maybe a little couple interesting things getting put out as well but the action is going to start right off as oregon goes underway and the ban phase will ensue absolutely so oregon we see pretty similar bands to clubhouse a lot of times so we might see the uh thatcher maverick but also maverick is kind of He's kind of, you know, they can ban him or they can't ban him. It, it really depends. So I feel like the first one will be Thatcher, or at least one will be Thatcher, but I'm not entirely sure on the second ban here. Yeah, Thatcher goes out. It'll probably be a hard breacher, I would say. Either a Habana or a Maverick has been very common. We've also seen Capital bans come out on display as well. But we'll see. Yes, it is a Capitao. He brings a lot of utility. And Nomads just doesn't want to have to deal with specifically dedicating a Wamai every single time in order to stop that. I was looking at the side selection as well for this map because I was like, isn't this Homeland's choice? And yes, Nomads actually did choose to attack first. So I guess they're pretty confident on this map, especially when they're banning the Wamai. That means no shield. And that's... Definitely going to take a hit towards the utility dumb meta that we see at high levels of Siege. Yeah, we'll see that's going to be a, a big problem for them. Clash up the board as well. Don't want to be messing with the angry British lady. And I can't blame them. She's very scary to go up against. You don't like seeing her. But with that, we'll be heading into round number one. Like you said, Homeland starting off on the defense, even though this is their map. So I'm really expecting big things from Nomad just hopping right in. And looks like uh, we'll be starting off in the lovely site of Laundry Supply. On the defensive side for HLA, they have all year one ops. Really nice to see. No, no DLC needed. And just uh -huh. like that, Beezer will ruin and rain on my parade. He's going to six pick away to the vigil, indicating that he's most likely going to be roaming. As well as the bandit pick could potentially be a, a throw off and a little bit of a smoke signal saying hey we're going upstairs especially with that castle choice that anarchy has locked in but most likely nomads their op selection on attack is going to be very static that's how a lot of teams like to attack you've got your hard breachers you've got your maverick and your habana you've got your entry with your ash and your zofia and you've got that flank watch with nomad so you can pretty much take any site on with that selection yeah, that's uh, what we see a lot with defensive teams. They usually do go for that one uh, one set of operators that they do feel comfortable with. And you know what? If it works, it works. But when it doesn't work, they're very, very slow to change it. So that might be a problem for them if they end up having a little bit of a rough beginning here, especially when this was their chance to start off in the defense and get something strong happening. I really, really do expect big things from Nomads, but Homeland... I mean, both these teams, fantastic. You know, uh, top three, I believe, both of them. So it'll be interesting to see how this battle goes. One of the one of the first Battle of Titans we have so far in this series. Yeah, pretty much you've got you've got Slaughterhouse, you've got these two teams, and I feel like I'm forgetting about one. Valkyrie. Valkyries, yes, Valkyrie. How was I gonna I knew JJ was on it and I didn't know the team name. I'm like, I know I know my boy JJ is out there on this team. But we're going to see an interesting roam come out of Beezer. He's going to be trying to lock down meeting and make that his home. And with the way that Nomads are lining up, they want to take Big Tower and start pushing down those stairs. And they're, because of how B 
bees are set up meeting they know they have to do a full top down roam clear especially with anarchy also at the top and the back side of addict he's going to show a little bit of face show a little bit of presence and make sure baited now has to waste away some utility and more so wasting the time because they're on the third floor right now and the site is all the way down in the basement Oh yeah, and time does go fairly quickly. Right now they still have about two minutes left to uh, find out just how they want to go in. Nomads brings in a lot of great players and I'm excited to see these guys in action. Yeah, Prince Snows once again. Spiker and Noodle baited a nerve. So you see Noodle a lot in the chat, so uh, it's nice to see him here. Now the big question is, can they set up for the execute well or will they be punished by Homeland's defense? Right now they're playing Pretty dang passive besides bees are still on the second floor looking to do a little bit of damage as they move on in. But there is not a lot of time left as half the round has passed by. They really need to get set up and still Beezer could cause a lot of problems for these guys if they are not careful. Yeah, especially with the time crunch. Like we said, there's only about a minute and 25 for them and they haven't started cracking away at the presence towards pillars and the rest of the site that Homeland is trying to grip in on. Merc has a shield, he has some ADSs, and he's in a very powerful position. You don't necessarily want to challenge a Jaeger, so not not looking ideal so far. He's going to swing out and take a good amount of damage right here, 75 quick off the board. As it seems, Nomads are pushing him back, but he still has his life in the back of his hand that might come in to bite them, especially when Beezer is now playing at the top of meeting and can drop down into that area. Merc is going to open up the fragment by taking out Nerve. That's no more Zofia, no more here, but Spiker's going to take out Beezer on the roam. Anarchy will fall. Noodle, but Merc's going to go on the down, but not out. Satan be taken out quickly by the Toxic Babes, but Exile is also going to answer back with his technically second kill with the SMG-11, taking out Baited, leaving it all up to, uh, to Snows and Spiker in a 2v3. Only 27 seconds left on the clock, and the smoke canisters are popping off making sure that that entryway in through the closet is not going to be utilized as Spiker and Snows now have to force their way into the 90 hallway, that big double door. Navozo has the crossfire. Snows is going to be able to take out Anarchy, but Navozo finally falls. Spiker leaving it all up to Snows. His position is now known here, and he will fall with the SMG-11. The crossfire employed by Exile and Navozo. The mute and smoke wombo combo from the British Isles will get it done in HLA take round one. Fantastic job, man. You like to see that. And uh, Homeland with the solid first defense. Nomads going to have to do a little better than that. That said, basement, laundry supply, a very, very powerful or bomb site. Excuse me. So I'm excited to see how the rest will go on. We're headed up to kids' dorms. And uh, at this point, they're doing quite well on defense, but they need to be able to answer the question, can you get at least two out of the three in the uh, main rotation? That's going to be what we're looking for, because if they don't, and uh, we, we might end up seeing a 3-3 or even a 4-2 in, in favor of the guys on Nomads, which would be exactly what they're looking for starting on that attack. You want to start on the side you feel like comfortable with. You want to start on your strong side so you can get that lead quickly. They'll have a chance to go up far, and yeah, I mean, if they don't, it'll be a real blunder on their part. Yeah, especially because Homeland still had the overtime choice, which naturally they're like, okay, you're going to give us defense on both sides. You're going to give us a definitive advantage to try to continue momentum. Let's say there's a 4-2 split for both sides. Typically, like Nomads, if they had chosen to defend first, they start off 4-2. Then, no, then Homeland comes back on their defenses and ties it all up, and then they get to go and stay on the defensive. Maybe they were trying to disrupt that rhythm of the potential of going to overtime. That would be nine almost or that would be seven plus potentially eight rounds in a row almost on defense for homeland so they could really could have figured out their groove and understand how nomads wanted to play going into overtime or maybe they're just really comfortable with their attacks they've scrimmed it a lot they understand maybe there's some vods on homeland that i don't know that nomads has that extra intel in their back pocket but only time will tell as this round and the rest of the game continues to unfold I was hoping he was going to check that evil eye into the bear's mouth. That would have been a nice place. No one ever checks the bear's mouth, man. I'm telling you. New strategy coming out. But the round has started about 30 seconds already drained away. We're seeing a little bit of pressure onto the big and small tower. They're moving on in. 
Here we go. Big Tower making their move, wanting to get in quickly. These are now onto the Jaeger. Another roaming off who's very, very powerful, and that is going to be a potential problem for them once again if they're not able to really get something strong going. Check this out. The Maverick going to be doing a little bit of tricking himself, but Merc is ready for it. No C4 as uh, they've gone with the shield instead. Kind of peculiar. You don't often see the Valkyrie without a uh, nice little C4 at her side. But there we go. The trick will happen. That wall will open up quite soon. And now the pressure will begin to be placed into Homeland's hands. A lot of movement coming in from Nomads. They've got a strong setup. And at this point, they're going to be able to move in quite quickly to that uh, little bit of an attic there. And it's going to be up to Homeland to shut them down as the push begins. Still a lot of time, though, for uh, Nomads to really set this up, get comfortable. And Homeland need to make sure they don't get comfortable. Look at all the presence they have already. You got baited here, ready to push in. You've got Noodle going around a little bit. This is going to be a pretty big execute as everyone's still up. The only damage coming on to Nerve for about 50 HP. We're going to see a big firefight for the end of this round. Yeah, Noodle is rotated over to the big window, but that is watched by the keen eye of Beezer through that black mirror that Mira does bring. Usually banned a lot, but this time she's on display. So we'll see if she continues to have an impact. Does have a Nitro Cell, unlike the Valkyrie that we already talked about. So that's your traditional plant denial of Anarchy's cams, Navozo with a C4 that's already actually been used, and then Exile Smoke Canisters. So maybe they're lacking just a little bit, but when you get frags like this, Merc is gonna take out Snows, no more Maverick, no more Breaching, but his job has probably already been done. Maybe it would have been nice to have a couple of frag grenades, but I do also believe that those were used to open up the, the wall that was soft because Ash was on the other side of the map. Now, baited down below is trying to find out the angles here that Anarchy was using to go down. But Beezus is going to get a beautiful shot onto Noodle through that window that was broken. But Exile is also going to take out Nerve. It's all up to Baited and Spiker. Never mind. Baited has lost his life as Nervoso swings out with that war hammer. That is the Vector. Exile will finish off with another swing with the SMG 11 and Homeless. Take it flawless. Well, you know what? Maybe Nomads are feeling a little bit nervous at this point. They could easily see this thing get out of hand. We're headed to the third site, the tertiary site, and this will decide, does Homeland have it in them to go for this flawless rotation, this 3-0 beginning that proves you are on fire? Now, it is a defender side of map for the most part. Sometimes we see odd happenings, like on Clubhouse, when <laughs> the team just 6 0 them. I believe that was Granny Frost. That'll yeah, again. that was insane, that man. On 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 attack, even so, it, you can see crazy things. But at this point, it's looking very good for Homeland Academy on defense, and it's going to take a lot here. Meeting Hall Kitchen will be that tertiary site, so really need to expect and see something big from Nomads, or they will fall behind potentially a little bit too far already. You don't want to be going in to a potential five one or even six zero. You want to be able to at least secure something. But Homeland, I mean, they looked so strong in that previous round. Nomads has a lot of work to do, and I think it's going to start with finding an opening pick instead of being the opening pick yourselves. Especially on a second floor site, either kitchen and dining or kitchen and meeting, as we're seeing on display right now, you have to have a heavy roam presence. So we're going to see players such as probably Exile and I would assume Beezer go upstairs. And yes, actually, Merc has also joined them on the Alibi. They're going to be setting up a maze of castle barricades, a lot of utilities, some prismas thrown into the mix. And they're going to try to make sure that vertical pressure does not fall into the hands of nomads. You see there's some breaching charges on Nerve. He switched off the Claymore, brought the breaching charges. And Baited also could use the breaching rounds in her, in the Ash, whatever the launcher is called. It's something. It's I know they're breaching rounds. Don't know. It's not like a lifeline launcher like Sophia but a little bit more complicated. But also, most likely, Baited is going to be having to utilize those breaching rounds to break down the castle barricades in order to really bring in some pressure on the long lines of sights, as well as flush out any entry points that they want to utilize. It will be interesting to see how they use the breaching rounds, and uh, already a little bit of tricking coming out from Prince Snow, who's the man's doing a good job of opening this wall up. The trick will go down quite quickly. And now, uh, once again, they have some good pressure. But the big question still comes, will they have uh, the power to execute? Two minutes remain. So they have uh, opened this up quite quickly. All things 
thought about. And I mean, at this point, they're looking quite good. They need to be able to get the wall open at this point. It's still electrified, so that could potentially be a problem. But another trick now downstairs coming in. This is where the side is down on meeting room. So he might be a little bit more contested. You see Spiker ready to go as well on the Nomad playing quite aggressively, looking to get these guys a little bit tripping. So we'll see how this one goes with about half the round remaining. It's time for Homeland to see if they just can shut him down all three times. Anarchy really the only one holding sight right now on the meeting room, but um, he's holding a very tight angle to Kaid, a strong operator. And so far, no blood has fallen, and we only have, okay, well, excuse me, Anarchy's gonna take down Noodle. Once again, it's Homeland Academy with the opening frag, and this could spell doom for the guys on Nomads that they can't refrag. And Navozo with a beautiful C4 end of Snows just reinforces that statement that they need to be able to get these frags refragged, or it's not gonna work out well for them. Yeah, the pressure is mounting as it's a 3v5. They have to climb this mountain and break out of the two-man deficit that they currently find themselves in. And starting off by taking out Beezer's a good step in the right direction. The Nomad is able to fall the Jaeger. So that is a one powerful gun out. But is going to answer right back with the refrag. No more air jabs, no more whatever. But is going to be able to take out a second one. Baited also picked up Anarchy in the meantime. But it's all up to Baited. is going to swing out, get his third kill of the round, and Homeland take it again. Oh yeah, not only did they take it again, but they also take that big flawless rotation that we always like to talk about. I feel like it doesn't happen that often, but when it does, it's a very, very powerful moment for the team where they are solely in the driver's seat. Nomads have a lot of work to do. They have the opportunity to be on the defensive start. They chose to go to the attack, and at this point, the best they can hope for is a 3-3, and that's what they perfectly win all three. They do a perfect rotation of their own. They need to match that or they'll be at a little bit of a disadvantage. I, someone in, in the chat said that they should be okay with the 4-2, uh, the and they absolutely would be. But the problem with that flawless rotation is you're still going to have to win two sites that you haven't just to secure the 4-2. It's going to be tough. And heading back to Laundry, this is their chance to open up on a very tough site. But Homeland Academy, once again, looking very strong. Defenders, protect your bombs yeah, protect your at first, attacker. I guess... The surprise factor is always a thing. Nomads didn't know exactly what Homeland was going to do. And pretty much everything has stayed the same, except a little bit of a mix-up as Anarchy picks up the Oryx. I've seen him do some crazy stuff with Oryx. He's a, he's a madman. He jumps up hatches and then he'll jump up and you'll watch him jump up. And then he'll immediately drop again and shoot you. And it's just, like, I don't know how he does it on Oryx, but being the most, I guess mobile defender in the entire game just being able to jump from one side of the map to another like he could jump up attic he could be in big tower walk one room into meeting jump up and then be on the absolute other side of the map within seconds which is just crazy but i guess from a utility standpoint that's why he isn't played as much sure you can make rotate holes like we just saw the kool-aid man burst straight through some wooden beams but not necessarily the most useful like, he doesn't have a nitro cell, he doesn't have, like, a smoke where you could be like, oh, yes, he can stop somebody from entering a doorway for 30 seconds. But doorways will be the first thing. His XL takes out Baited on the rush, takes out a second one with that Mossberg shotgun. Lots of Buckshot getting shot down ranges. The rush is being picked apart. Bees will also be able to take out Spiker, and it's all left up to Noodles and Snow. They got the refrags out, but the rest of their team has fallen in quick succession. <laughs> I mean, they were able to refrag Beezer, but I mean, it's still a 4v2 situation. A little bit grim, considering that the defense does have the advantage of being rooted in. And with four angles being held, it's going to be tough for Nomads to break in. Because as soon as they poke one angle, you could have another person just diverge right onto your situation. And you are in trouble. So if Noodle and Snow somehow pulls this out, big props to them. And they still have a lot of time to figure out how they want to do I'm really interested to see if they can, if can do anything at this point because it's not looking very good. Noodle trying to sneak in here, trying to get a couple of pot shots in as Prince takes down the freezer stairs looking to go home. That's where Snow belongs, in the cold, and he wants to dominate that as Noodle is chilling. Actually, very, very close now, looking to get in. You got a nice little pinch, but you're going to have to take down 
a few people in order for it to be effective. Anarchy takes down Noodle, and, and now things are all but over here as Prince, uh, excuse me, Prince Snows. I'm just going to call him Snows. Call him Snows. That's what we're doing. Finds a kill onto Exile. 3v1 now as he needs to find three more. Still has a minute to do it and has 100 HP. The man looks healthy, but that can change extremely quickly. Minute to go. Does he have what it takes to win this round out? I just don't know. Yeah, he's going down the main stairs because he knows he has to get the diffuser that Noodles Habana did drop. He's able to spot out the arm of one player, but there's too many crosses. Navozo, a surgeon on the SMG 11, swings out and takes out Snows. As of right now, just the British boys are running rampant. Navozo and Exile on Mutant Smoke are the ones fragging those anchors. They're just being too strong, sure. Nomads has been able to get some control over towards site and slowly wrap in, maybe take out a roamer to Beezer's guide a couple of times. But as soon as they get to site, you have to deal with Exile and Navozo holding crosses, swinging everything. And it's just been too much to handle up to this point. <laughs> too much to handle. Absolutely, man. Those opening two shotgun kills just blew off any momentum that they possibly could have had. And heading back to dorms, once again, a site that they uh, are able to get into quickly or rather get into the part where you can get into site. It's a pretty ver or ver pretty horizontal hold, I suppose, when you're talking about this site, as uh, you can you can get into attic pretty quickly, but there's still gonna be people staring down at you as you make your way in. So this site can be tough. The good thing is you can get a little bit of vertical control from the bottom, try to you know get these guys a little freaked out as to what's gonna happen, but Still, we've seen it time and time again. Homeland very, very at home on the defensive side of their map. I'm sure they were absolutely tickled when Nomad decided to go for the attack. They have got to feel like that's the best news ever. And at this point, they are threatening the 6-0 unless Nomads can do something about it. And uh, at this point, I mean, looking a little bit grim. You've seen these guys go off. Novozo standing with seven kills. Zero deaths. The man has not died. Exile six and one. Just phenomenal stats from these guys. Well, the most from Nomads is Snows with just three, and he's still going negative with four deaths. Not a good start for the guys on the Nomads, but we've seen teams come back from worse. We've seen teams act, uh, come back from much worse, but they really need to get something started here, or it will just continue to snowball into disaster. Yeah, and this was the site that Homeless went flawless. Sure, Beezer got put in the down but not out state, but the, everybody else picked up a frag before it even mattered. Some of out cams are going to be spotted, as well as the default ones that his nerve pulls out, the scanner of the IQ. And yes, that is a G8. That is an insanely powerful weapon if nerve is able to get in some gunfights. Probably could turn into quite the potential fragger and spiker is going to be able to take out beezer that's no rome that's no jaeger and for once nomads finally has the opening pick will this be the change they need only time will tell as the wall gets opened oh absolutely man it's going to be real exciting to see if this is needed says hello she's excited too for this series it's bound to be great because they are actually going to be battling for that third place right now um, there's Nomads Granny Frost and Homeland Academy with two wins apiece. So if Nomads wins, or if Homeland wins, they'll be able to go to that third place and uh, keep themselves up in the rankings. So it's a big game for both of them. You do want to be able to stay as high as you can as the series progresses. But Nivozo on to Noodle will even out the man count. A beautiful shot with the Vector, a weapon that a lot of people hate on. But you know what? It, it do shoot very fast and a lot of bullets downrange. I mean, a lot of chance to hit someone's head and boy oh boy man when you hit someone's head they're going down so with just about a minute left it'll be a nice shot from nerve to take down anarchy go bye bye says the maestro and uh at this point looking pretty good for nomads if they can continue to put, apply this pressure a lot of the guys in homeland are not looking all too healthy this is a bad situation for them if they are unable to get something happening they could be in a little bit of trouble we need but, to be able to see some kills come back from Gnome, or excuse me, Homeland, but we'll see that happen. The Spiker picks up another. Yeah, and now it is a 4v2 clutch potential for the Homeland boys, but a trade is going to come out as Merc is fallen by a nade. Exile is going to swing out and take out Snows, but it's not enough as Spiker picks up another kill from the rear. Nomads finally take the round, and they were able to finish up and continue the momentum from getting the opening pick and just kind of kept 
jamming themselves down Homeland's throat. The pressure never relentless. They didn't take their foot off the gas. They kept on pushing. That's what they need to do here on the final round if they want that 4-2 split. If not, going down 5-1 isn't the best. Sure, it's a def Oregon's a defender-sided map. I think we can all agree on that. But maybe not a 5-1 map. Yeah. I mean, because that means you have to match the 5-1. You have to win 5 on defense just to be able to go to overtime. And to win from a 5-1, you'd have to flawlessly rotate twice and get the 6-0. So it's not a situation you want to find yourself in. But you know what? I think Nomads does have a fairly good chance. This is a weaker site. And if they can get those opening picks and get that early momentum, I, I could definitely see us going 4-2. And that would be a great start after a, a little bit of a sketchy beginning. We saw four lands in a row, four lands, four rounds in a row go to homeland. And Nomads can really slow them down, get that momentum, and then switch over to defense. That could be really powerful and potentially deadly if Homeland isn't careful. They might feel a little cocky right now, feeling like they're up 4-1. But that can change very quickly. We've seen it time and time again where 4-2 looks pretty far. But, I mean, a 4-3, all of a sudden, they're right at your doorstep. So you can't get too out of perspective with the rounds. And you need to be able to stay in your game. Let's see if Homeland can do that or if Nomads... We'll kind of shake them up a little bit here. Interesting to see that on the same site last time around, they brought the Kaid. We're able to put a nice electric wall that got both the attic wall as well as the one at the bottom of Small Tower. And it did end up causing a good amount of trouble for Nomads because they successfully Maverick tricked the wall, made it soft. But their only soft breacher was the ash and you can't ash an electrified wooden wall. You can with Zofia, but not with ash. So that slowed them down. Now they have a sledge, so sledge will take, like, what, three damage from the electricity if he wants to smack it away. And any time saved is time gained for the Nomads, because at the end of the day, a lot of their times, they just kind of have to throw themselves in sight, and then you're going up against Exile and Nevozo with very powerful close-range weapons, and it hasn't worked out quite well. In addition to that, they actually have no breach... Um, no anti-breaching measures on the defensive side. So they could just breach away with Noodle and we go really quickly as opposed to for waiting on Snows to ma successfully Maverick Trick. Could save even more time to deal with the roam that is upstairs. That is Merc over there on the Vigil. Going to be masking himself and cloaking with his device, trying to make sure his position is not known in the concrete way. Yeah, it is. Uh, you, you get the idea that he's somewhere, but you don't know his exact position. And that can be very valuable as that wall will be softened. A nice position to see just how that works as Anarchy swings out. But Nomad takes the first kill. Spiker finds Anarchy. Bye bye. Castle, not the most valuable pick, but still a man off the board. And we've seen the opening kill has been so momentous in these occasions that uh, it just might be what Nomad's needs to force this one home. Still quite a bit of time, but Nerve's going to go down. A nice refrag onto the IQ. That's a pretty good pick. That's a G8 off the board. Come up against the uh, R4, or excuse me, the 416. And going to be a little bit of a battle there. K1A as well. Look at all these gun names. So cool. As uh, we will see this round continue. A little bit of flash happening is Nevozo still playing that Mira with extreme prejudice we might say smoke goes down prince is gonna have to run away snows rather not gonna be able to plant in that situation but a great shot from snows takes down Navozo. that's a big name off the board the mira is dead and now it's time for beezer merc exile to all do their best to slow this down but baited looking for a kill and he will find it onto beezer a 2v4 turned into a 2v3 after merc finds one but it's shut down as snows and noodle both find the final kills and indeed Nomads have brought it back to a 4-2 after it looked a little bit grim. Yeah, I wouldn't say necessarily grim. It, it looked bad. Nomads were in the position to really get kind of stomped on on the first half, but they brought themselves back into it. 4-2 split is what you want on your attacking of Oregon, and they're, they're looking good. They won both of those rounds pretty handily. Quite a few people still left on the board as... HLA kind of seemed to slow down just a little bit. They really did, man. I mean, uh, they had some great rounds. Four in a row is fantastic, but to be just slowed down that quickly is a, a little bit scary for Homeland Academy. And it, it definitely goes to show that man, Nomads is here. Ball. They're ready to play. They're getting great frags. Look at Snows and Spike right now with five and six kills, while uh, Exile and Nivozo, still eight and seven, have slowed down a considerable amount. And that could cause problems if they are not careful. 
about how they go about this attacking business might have an advantage now to nomads and pull something out crazy they could go for it and you know what this is a map that it isn't impossible to find a 5-1 half for your defensive side and if they pull that then we could just be seeing a route or a map over in favor of nomads but i'm sure homeland's going to put up a nice fight i mean we'll really get to get a good feel as this round begins because this is one of those uh one of those key sites that can be very difficult to attack and in fact if we look at it Laundry's been won every time it's been defended. That's two out of two so far, and they could make it here three out of three. So we'll see just about how good Homeland looks on their attack, as this will be the um, the measuring tape we use. See how they stack up against Nomad's defense. And honestly, it could decide who's going to be able to come out of this a little bit on top. Yeah, I mean... To a certain extent, this is Homeland's map choice. So I'm sure that they're as comfortable on the attacks as they are on the defenses here. Merc is going to be going a nice room clear here following some drones. Joined in by the big hammer of Exile on the sledge. He, I guess he just only plays the British operators. He needs that SMG-11 in his back pocket in order to feel nice and comfy. Especially as they're trying to make sure that there's no shenanigans going on in the room business. None, nobody off-site may be causing trouble with flanks. Lots of drone work coming out. Lots of intel being gathered as they're realizing oh no nomads has five people on site we need to get down there quickly and start pressuring them or else we're definitely going to run into a bit of a time constraint it will be interesting to see the time management come out from these guys so far not a lot of control has been taken they are quickly moving down the big tower steps though and uh with about half the round to go they're definitely taking their time as they uh, look to open up a hatch try to slow down the defensive hold is um right now it's uh it's half the round left and homeland still looking for some good ability to grab onto some real estate they've taken meeting room and they do have a couple of guys heading downstairs but at this point it's going to be a little bit of a yeet if time continues to go the way it is nerve with a c4 out looking for somebody to blow up he could easily find him there's a lot of targets but it's also dangerous to throw yourself out there even for just a second with Merc watching that angle so vigilantly. Nerve going to be pushed off of that angle indeed. It is now still in a 5v5 situation. The minute has begun to tick down. It's going to end soon. And when it does, it'll be an absolute scary business to unfold. It's going to be crazy. And uh, the big question is who will come out on top? Yeah, some pressure's coming down from both Freezer Stairs and the bottom of Big Tower. There's also somebody on Pillar that's baited with the um, Scorpion. He's going to be able to take out Exile. That high fire rate, the absolute warthog of a weapon, almost like a jet engine with its fire rate, is going to net bait it the first kill and put the man count advantage firmly into the hands of Nomad. But Bees is going to be able to get the refrag onto the Ella. No more Pillars control. No more pressure out here. He's going to swing, almost find out another player, but he narrowly misses the head. Never going to take out Navozo, but Anarchy answers back by taking out Spiker. Snows will also fall at the hands of Anarchy. He picks up a second kill, and Merc adds himself into the bag. It's all up to Noodle in a 1v3 situation. The bomb is going down. Clock is almost at zero, but one more shot comes out. Anarchy takes off the head of the Maestro, and Homeland win round seven. A pretty dominant win, too, on a site that can be considered very, very defender sided that we've seen but um man nomads could be in a little bit of trouble once again is i mean they need to at least get that 4-2 to stay alive or better if they want to just straight up win the game and uh, hla looking real good right from the get-go we will see a retry down in the laundry room they're going to try to fix a couple of things that they believe they did wrong and try to get something right and let's see if this will be the lineup they need you saw some early kills go down it was actually, um, I think it was HLA who lost the first man, but Beezer with the immediate refrag, and then a couple more fell on the side of Nomads, and it was just too much pressure to handle. You're in a 1v3 situation. There's not terribly too much you can do, except for clutch it, and that's going to be really hard in a situation like that. Back downstairs looking for another chance to get this going. Nomads are um, potentially going to be placed in a match point if they can't figure this out here and bring us to a 5-3 instead. Yeah, it was a really well-structured attack coming out of Homeland. They went third floor to first floor, had about a minute when they started entering in, and didn't waste a second after that. They went in, they got their picks, sure, Baited got the first kill. But when you have a 
former Roamer entry fragger in the form of Beezer on your Thermite. He's going to swing with his chest and he's going to find the head of the Ella. And after that, it was just the Homeland show. It was kill after kill after kill of just being able to properly read into the positions of the Nomads defenders. Know that, yes, there's going to be somebody here because they have to. They have to play these default positions. Get the pick in Freezer and then use the holes that were opened up as long angles to their own advantage. Anarchy picked up either two or three kills on the Maverick. That M4 does work. And at the end of the day, they took the round in a very well-structured way. Sure, they were planting as the clock hit zero. But when you still have three people alive and two people can protect the diffuser, it's not that much of a worry. That's very true, man. I mean, you they were in a good situation. Absolutely shut that down. Clearing out the second floor now as Exile will be moving around. Still on seven kills, looking very nice indeed. A little bit of soft destruction here and there will provide ample angles to be looked upon by Merc. We got Snows holding the shoddy, you ready to go. The man playing the SAS operator surely has that SMG 11 in the back pocket ready to go. He'll be holding that tight angle, waiting for someone to step into his trap. He's just begging them to walk on down. So, Homeland in a really good situation as they can claim match point with a single round, but Nomads has a chance to fight back at this point and try to secure at least overtime. If they want to win straight up, they uh, are going to have to win all five rounds from here, and that doesn't seem very uh, doable. It, it is doable, but it just doesn't seem all too likely. We'll see as the rounds progress if that's even going to be a choice, because if Homeland wins one more round, the best Nomads can hope for is going to overtime. Like you said, though, this is um, Oregon. This is a Homeland's pick. They wanted to go here, and uh, maybe that's why we're seeing a pretty great showing from them so far. Yeah, they're looking really strong, and they're looking to do the exact same thing they did last time. They've, they're have they going full top-down and understanding, yes, Nomads isn't roaming once again. But the clock has already struck down to about a minute, and they don't have very much pressure towards sight. Their first obstacle is going to be Spiker and Baited, sitting at both the bottom in the pillar and the at backside of Freezer, respectively. Those are going to be the two players that must die quickly, or else there really isn't anything you can do to get into sight. You're going to have to go through them, and probably going to come in as unison as some flashbangs are going to burn away the ADSs. Exile is holding the angle, waiting for Baited to potentially swing, but his screen is full blind status. He can't really see. He's actually managed to fall all the way back as Merc is also pressuring towards the top of the hatch And I assume there's gonna be somebody coming down freezer as well A shield will bite the dust and with only 20 seconds on the clock things are about to spice up indeed Oh, yeah, definitely gonna get it spicy here 15 seconds to make your execute but HLA gonna open two and get Merc, Merc with a second kill on the snows all of a sudden What just happened Merc with the triple kill and Nevozo to finish it off? You said things were going to spice up. I didn't know you were talking about Carolina Reaper Spice. That was insane. Oh my goodness. Homeland Academy, very strong as they just collapsed upon Nomads and shut them down within five seconds. Good grief. Those are some really good entry picks coming out of Merc. And I have something to say to all the analysts that were like, oh my gosh, well, my really went to the 20 second meta and made it worse. Well, mine's not here. And we still saw a 20 second execute coming out of Homeland. They droned everything. They understood what they had to do. They made sure all their I's were dotted, their T's were crossed, and all of those nomad ducks were in a row. As soon as that clicked, somebody called, hey, let's go. Everybody probably comes when silence. Then everybody just died in unison. Everybody on nomads just went from zero to 100 health or from 100 to zero health. That's a little bit of an opposite of that saying, but still really great work from Nomads as they seem to, they seem to, or of Homeland, as they seem to really know how to attack that site and are very comfortable doing so. I mean, that's a great site to be comfortable with too. I mean, that is a, almost a comfort site. That is a site that most teams consider to be very, very strong indeed. And uh, to see it fall twice, Homeland has won every single time we've seen Laundry Supply and that does say something about Homeland and this being their map pick. Talking to map picks, we are potentially three minutes away from heading to Cafe. Homeland looking so dominant. Nomads, the best they can do right now is win every round here from, from 9 to 12 and take us to overtime. That is all they can do. Four rounds in a row without any mistakes. Looks a little bit dire and a little bit dim. 
for the guys on Nomads. I mean, it's a tough order to fill, and if they can, that'll be huge props to them. And after four rounds in a row, that momentum might just carry them through the overtime. But once again, it will be Homeland starting back on defense, and they had a very nice defensive run. So could be tough if Nomads even does win those four in a row. It'll be interesting to see if they can, but they're in a perilous position. Yeah, and Homeland has looked sharp as ever on their attacks. Typically, I would have expected to see Nomads maybe get some momentum back on their side, especially after winning two straight attacks for them no, with being able to stop the potential 6-0 or even the 5-1 split. But we're just seeing, I guess, a game of streaks. Homeland wins four in a row. Nomads wins two. Now... <laughs> um, Homeland has 1-2 right back, and they're trying to continue on the pressure as Beezer's going to be using one of those lovely exothermic charges to blast away the attic wall, and all of a sudden Anarchy is rotating over to the backside where he'll probably try to Maverick trick away the Master Wall to put a nice double-pronged fork into their attack, trying to pinch out the remaining anchors inside of sight, and right now there are five remaining. Yeah, this is going to be real interesting. Already half the round is gone. I mean, you know, the Thermite Exothermic Charge takes much less time than the Trick, but still, we're draining quite quickly. We haven't seen this site defended by Nomads yet, as it's been both Laundry Supply since we've switched over, and what a nade from Exile. Oh my goodness, takes down Noodle real quick. Taking the man advantage in Bye Bye Castle. Not the biggest pick, but Nerve goes down too. Exile on a little bit of a tear. Finds the double kill once more, but Anarchy is shut down now from Spiker. That'll be the Jaeger opening up. Seven kills for the man, doing a lot of work for his team. 4v4 situation now turned into a 4v3, excuse me. As, uh, yeah, Nomads with the man disadvantage need to be able to hold an extra angle, but they just can't. So this allows the offense to kind of spread around a little bit more. Try to and close them in from a bunch of different ways and one of those ways will most likely be uncontestable another kill from Novozo takes down baited but snows with a refrag onto merc a little bit of gas coming in too as snows wants to protect himself spiker and snows left the two s guys ready to go and spiker with a beautiful kill onto Novozo takes it down to a 2v2 they're looking to stay alive and they're fighting hard it's exile down now but beezer with the refrag it's a 1v1 beezer versus spiker the uh two Big fraggers for the team are now facing head-to-head. -head. Beezer, I guess, hasn't fragged as much as his teammates, but he's definitely a big name here Five in Tier 3, and you don't want to look down the wrong side of his barrel. Moving in quickly is Spiker now as the plant will go down. He's looking to find the instant kill right up the diffuser, but it looks like Beezer is able to run away a little bit, find the post-plant situation. He's looking to really set up well here. This is a very tense moment for both teams as they want to get off this map, but a shot! From Beezer ends it all, and that is what you call a homeland victory on Oregon. Good grief, shown in absolutely fantastic position and uh, just great fashion. That'll be a 7-2 in favor of Homeland Academy. Yeah, they looked really strong on the map. Their first four defensives were flawless. Then they had a little bit of a, of a rough patch where Nomads were able to find their footing and feel a bit confident. But as soon as the attack switched... They, they flipped it back on. They looked absolutely amazing on the attack and ultimately were able to propel themselves into that big 7-2 win. They're going to be setting themselves up for maybe a continuation of the momentum going towards Cafe, but that is going to be no man's pick. And after our quick five-minute intermission, we'll be sure to get right back into the action. So make sure to stay tuned.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, as we're going to kick right on into map two of our loan series tonight. If you're just now tuning in, it's Homeland versus Nomads. And last map was a 7-2 decisive victory for Homeland on their map choice of Oregon. But the script could be completely flipped as Cafe Dostoevsky, the big Russian maze of the three floor maps, is Nomads' choice. I'm C-Dabs, joined by the monster on the mic, as I love to call him, known as Slayzilla. Oh, absolutely. And we can't forget the man broadcasting and making beautiful art since uh, yesterday. Yeah, Kazer in the Sky, <laughs> who has a, another masterpiece I'm sure he'll show you eventually. So the first two bands, once again, Thatcher and Capital. These guys don't like Thatcher and Capital, and uh, you don't blame them. Thatcher is definitely someone who can mess with any electronics, and uh, Capital can burn your feetsies as well as cover a nice little sneaky plant. Mira, you know, yeah, she's gone as well. She can be a problem too. Get her off the board. And uh, who do you think for the final? You got three seconds to tell me. Um, Echo. Echo it is. Fantastic job from CDAPS. Go to Vegas because you got your, I guess it wasn't even a lucky guess. You just know. Oh, yeah, dude, I'm a knower. I'm a knower. <laughs> That's what people say in chat when they play me in ranked, right? They say I'm a knower. But with round one coming up, HLA has the defensive side once again on a map that's a little bit defender side. And more and more as teams have become really accustomed to cafe and all the nuances of attacking, it's it's typically could be like a 3-3 kind of map, maybe a 4-2 for defensive. Neither one of those score lines would surprise me. So hopefully Nomads has something in their bag of tricks ready to pull out as third floor bar and cocktail lounge will be the first battlegrounds. Oh, they will indeed, as I snag a quick drink of my lovely cold water. Nothing like water to get you going. As we prepare for round number one, it's going to be bar cocktail defense. Coming up first, a pretty fun site, man. This is um a pretty strong site, but it can also be a pretty weak site if not held correctly. So I'm excited to see how Nomad's set up. Looking like we're seeing a Montaigne come out from the guys over on Nomads. They're starting on the offense. Excuse me. Because it's their pick, Homeland takes the defense. So I'm excited to see Homeland on the defense. We do see a couple of nice ops. A pretty pretty basic, I would say, uh, three, third floor hold with the classic Lumai coming out. A lot of uh, a lot of wasted a lot of wasted um, utility going to be happening here. Is you have to chuck through all of the ADSs and those pesky Wamai magnets. Nomad's going to have to start off strong. Is I mean they've allowed Homeland to begin on defense twice in a row now and twice in a row they might just run off with it here yeah like we said the utility dump is gonna have to go over towards that cocktail corner the what corner of white pixel corner whatever you want to talk about it it's it's the corner of piano and it's always a very heavily contested area that you're gonna have to deal with dumping a lot of utility as well as some bullets flying back at you at that as that aug the nevoza wields inside his hands does a lot of damage that's an attacker rifle on a defender a recipe for easy frags if he's able to properly get the intel from those little slits inside his shield hit his c key hit his mouse one and decapitate an attacker if they're caught slacking yeah, pretty cool setup with those double shields. I like to see it, man. Very, very fun indeed. And uh, we know Homeland is a definitely, a definitely a great team on defense. But how are they going to hold up against the coming in? Ooh, with a thicky boy. Look at those polka dots on his shield. Very, very nice indeed. He's ready to get something happening. And uh, I mean, it could go very well for Nomads. They would love to start off with a victory here on this first site. Let's see if it's going to happen at this point. I just don't know because there's a lot that could happen and a bit of a run out from Noodle. Whoa, why did I say that? <laughs> Dude, I'm out of it. Oh my goodness, take it away. Yeah, he's going to run out a window, but not on the defensive <laughs> side where he would be detected. But more right. drone work is going to be going in as about half of the round has gone down, but no pressure towards Piano quite yet. Exile is going to be getting the first kill onto Noodle, but Spiker's going to answer right back by taking the British brother and arm of Nevozo out. Actually, he's not on an SAS operator. He was the pixel player in that corner as there might be a little bit of a smoke execute coming down. They have Snows on the Monty. He has smokes. There's a couple more coming out of the rest of the team. He's going to potentially try to sneak on his way into sight, but another Toxic Babe canister of Exile is masterfully shown, shutting down that entryway and 
took a lot of HP away from the Monty. Nerve's gonna get another kill onto Beezer, but the swing is gonna come right back from Freezer as Anarchy ices away Nerve. It is a 3v3, 44 seconds left, but the Monty has made his way into sight. He has to worry about a lot of angles. However, Spiker's gonna be able to take out Anarchy, cutting that rotation out of Freezer into the bathroom. And the Monty is just standing there menacingly at this point. They have the man advantage, but health on Monty isn't looking too good. But as he taps away on the diffuser, the angles are cut, and there's no more toxic babe canisters in the back pocket of Exile. Merc's gonna be able to take out Spiker, ending his reign of terror, as well as <laughs> Exile will now take out Snows. But if you look at the positions, Exile is down. It is essentially a 1v1. Invaded is on the roof. Probably and arguably the most powerful post plant position on any map in any site. Yeah, there's almost no chance that they're being able to get this unless they find a lucky headshot onto the ash because literally what are you going to do here man you have to you have to play it so perfectly and you need someone to, to go for the defuse while you and he's actually jumping down that was a big misplay i feel like could have taken advantage of, of the uh, positioning but was unable to oh they and didn't the plant was planted yeah in a yeah in really a feasible location to be that strong on the roof you couldn't see it from there usually when someone's wanting to hold the roof you'll plant it kind of um I guess past the bar a little bit to that uh, I guess what would it be north east corner of the bar but it, it didn't happen and uh homeland academy gonna come back with defuse very clutch defuse as that didn't look good yeah it's just one of those things that it's the small things typically when you have somebody on the roof you want to plant over towards that corner of right next to like the adjacent wall to piano that you can breach but i believe it was soft that's where you would want to plant because you can get a nice angle that's nice and protected you barely have to peek a couple pixels of your forehead over there before you can see the entire body of somebody trying to counter diffuse but ultimately the only safe spot to plant was behind the second default that little mini bar that the monty crept in from the new balk but at the end of the day Exile got picked back up, the defuse went down, and Homeland took the round. Bomb located by attackers. That's exactly what happened, man. Exactly what happened. And Homeland taking the round early is something good for them, but Nomads, I mean, this is their map pick. They need to be able to, to win these fights that really they should be winning. I mean, it did come very close down to that 1v1 almost, well, 1v2, almost 1v1 with Exile being down, but just unable to protect the bomb is so unfortunate. It was a going to be a tough situation nonetheless, but yeah, you hate to see it, man. And a good job from Homeland to be able to execute on that and, well, I guess, un-execute their execute and uh, get the defuse. Very good play from Homeland. Let's see if it'll continue downstairs on Kitchen. Yeah, Kitchen is a site you can play two very different ways. You can either full-on hunker down, make sure that you're in these powerful positions such as bakery where you can just kind of fall back into prep. You can get your crossfires out from wedding. Yes, I'm going to call it wedding. I love you guys. And you guys will probably hate that call. But yes, wedding, the top right of your screen, not small bakery, it's called wedding. That will be another point of contention as Noodle has placed an air jab on that door, making sure that rotation is nice and locked up. Then Merc will eventually want to go into as his position at the bottom, the Harry Potter of Red Stairs, is holding a nice crossfire, making sure nobody goes into the rotate hole that they made. Prince Nose is making quick work of the wall. It might be electrified, but his breaching torch doesn't care as he draws those two parallel lines and will make that hard wall soft. Oh well, yeah, Hardwall Soft is a, a great trick indeed. A little bit of magic there is Anarchy Biker. That's a great start as, um, man, down goes the sledge. No more potential. Okay, well, Beta goes down too, and that's that's your Ash and your sledge down. So not a lot you can do in Soft Breaching from above, and that's going to really, really put some pressure onto Nomads here and take a little bit of pressure off. Already in a prep room, though, a beautiful flank as Nerve and Snows will find Beezer and Navozo. A frag from Merc takes down Noodle, and a 3v2 situation will go down to a 2v2 as Snows and Nerve once again take down Merc and an Anarchy. It's all upon Exile in a 1v2 situation. Nerve very low on HP. Snows fully HP'd up, but the smoke is a great operator to have at the end of the day. This is going to be real tough as the defuse will go down. Not able, oh, he was able to find it. Oh my goodness, Defuser is not down. Still a minute to go, and man, this is a great situation for Exile with still a whole canister left. 
the drones coming out trying desperately to figure out where this man is and how they can play it out but this is looking a little bit sketchy for nomads and dang exile has a chance to really clutch it up for his team right here looking to pick the boy up another smoke no will go way. down it's just perfectly placed goodbye he downed the maverick <laughs> with the smoke canister waited a little bit for him to crawl to safety and then threw another one and took both players out yes beezer that is 500,000 IQ. What a clutch from Exiles. He continues to prove his power and his prominence on that high skill gap character of Smoke. We don't know what's in the canister, but we know Exile can definitely frag on the British boy. <laughs> he really did, man. That's fantastic. No offense says, imagine not calling Merc M. Her. So we'll be sure to change that one up. Thanks. It's that. not. It's don't yeah. listen to Noah. You don't <laughs> listen to Noah. That's the rule one. Is you never <laughs> listen to Noah. I just like I just like seeing what he has to say though. It's a good time. <laughs> and I'm sure he he doesn't mean any offense by it. The guy's the guy's nice. But once again, HLA looks to perform a perfect rotation throughout the sites as they now go downstairs to reading. Oh, you like you like to call it reading feeding. <laughs> so <let's laughs> got to make the rhymes. You got to make the rhymes. Oh, absolutely. The wonderful reading and feeding room will be the next bomb site chosen by Homeland as they're going to be employing their full vertical roam. There's going to be a lot of pressure over towards Cocktail as they make sure that the sledge of Spiker won't be able to just make it like Home Depot and renovate everything, exposing all of the angles down below, making sure that those anchors downstairs won't feel safe. But if the vertical roam does sort of be successful, bees are Anarchy and a lot of other players will get a couple of kills, continue wasting away time and making sure that other players cannot just find their way into sight. They can't just rush in. <laughs> well, at this point, Nomads really need to find a win here. They could be placed in an equally rough position of uh, what we saw. <laughs> I love the physics now. I'll never <laughs> into the camera. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's great. Oh man, always distracts me every time. I'll never get over it as Biker's looking to find someone easy up here on that third floor. He's wanting to uh, shoot someone down. Beezer on white stairs waits and uh, holds a nice tight angle as we do see the lovely evil eyes of Anarchy come into usage. They will potentially be very, very useful indeed. It's a great operator to have. Baited now, preparing to move in through Piano, wanting to get a little bit more control here. In fact, they have a lot of presence already on the third floor. And all they have to do is continue to push up a little bit easier to take real estate when you're not defending Bar Cocktail as you don't have to worry about all this soft flooring that you see to the right of your screen. It's just not important because the site is over to the middle and left of your screen. So we'll see if Homeland Academy is going to be able to hold that out. You still have a little bit of pressure coming in, but Beast on White Stairs might be able to shut them down. But with four guys up on the third floor, it's going to be tough. Yeah, Baited is making his way in using the cover of... Oh, what a shot on Anarchy. He found the pixel onto the side of the shield, put a bullet right through it, snaked its way in, and all of a sudden, your maestro is gone. However, Merc will also be the next to fall. He couldn't quite turn onto Spiker on that window, made quick work of the castle barricade, and found a kill for his endeavors. Just like that, it went from not looking too great for Nomad to all of a sudden, you're in a 2v5 situation. Sure, you've got Navozo and Bees are still on the board, each of them prolific fraggers, if last map was any indicator of that, but you're going up against five Nomads. Sure, their health doesn't look too great, but a man count advantage like this to such magnitude, you could just kind of throw everybody into sight and hope something sticks. You would probably still end up being successful. Oh, yeah. I mean, uh, you still have, I guess, two operators up on Homeland, but they're not exactly the best to have at the end of a round. You lost your smoke already, who uh, clutched it up last time, and things looking real good for Nomad. It's going to be up to Navozo and Beezer, two big names for Homeland Academy, to shut them down. A lot of guys at low HP, but... There's still five of them, dude. And that's a big number. Pushing now into reading room as Nabozo is still holding that uh, little bit of an angle onto the upstairs um, hatch. But down goes one. Noodle takes down Beezer. Nabozo with a refrag onto Spiker. Now it's all upon him in a 1v4. He'll be shut down immediately by Snows. And just like that, Nomads have won, shutting down the perfect rotation and keeping themselves in it for a nice potential 4 2 split. 
Yeah, that's the narrative that seems to be underway. It's slowly getting woven into actualization as if HLA is able to do what they did last time, we'll see a 4-2 split. Bar was a little bit shaky, I guess. You got the plant down, you had somebody on the roof, but it was just planted in the wrong spot. A little bit of a blunder coming out of Nomads where they definitely could have won if everything went according to plan. Maybe should have won. And then downstairs in Bakery, I guess, inside first floor, XL kind of had some heroics, got two kills with his utility. Probably... Also, I guess, pretty close. And then the Nomads kind of stomped on him on reading. So the scoreline being 2-1 to one in the favor of Homeland might be making them feel a bit lucky almost. But if they're able to fix the small mistakes they made, the small bits of overaggression in peaking, could definitely see these rounds going back into a 4-2 split or maybe even a 3-3 if Nomads is able to get their stuff together. Mm. Yeah, I could see a 3-3 split here. I mean... Every single round has been really, really close to the side of Nomads, and that last round was just overwhelmingly in the favor of Nomads. Because, like you said, first round came down to just the wrong spot of planting. It was basically, you know, a 1v1 turned into a 1v2 after Exile got picked back up. And then round two, it was just the freaking crazy yeetage of the smoke canister from, once again, Exile that took down two players. I mean... Honestly, it's been close, but you got to be able to take down the right guys. You don't want to smoke at the end of the round. We say that a lot, but I think we just saw a perfect case in point as to why on that kitchen defense. It was absolutely insane. Still have a couple rounds before we make the switch on over to the opposite side. So, I mean, there's a lot that can change and there's a lot that will change. We won't be changing with a 2-1 split. Someone's going to be getting a couple more points and whoever that is, will be found at a little bit of an advantage. Nomads with a good chance to move in already, taking some great control, trying to push up, take the second floor, make sure everything is all safe before they push up to the third floor. Pretty interesting take here. We'll see if it's going to work out as not too much presence on the roof as of yet. Yeah, they seems to be a little bit of a, of a cocktail push as the buck is making quick work of the floor above him. And that's the floor below Anarchy. That Master Key Shotgun is tearing through and opening up nice lines of sight and really making Anarchy worry about what dangers could be right beneath his feet. But he doesn't have to worry anymore as the all defines the head of Prince Snows. No more Buck, no more Soft Breach coming out, and his position will be safe over towards that Heaven Balcony. Bait is now going to drone his way up white where he'll be met with a, a little bit of a lot of... HLA players, there's a castle, there's a Jaeger, he probably won't want to go up there. Staircases, oh. Anarchy finds a second oh. kill through that angle. However, he is going to be refragged out of the nice hands of the Zofia. The NSM62 does rip through people. Nerve also gets, or no, that was um, somebody else killed Exile. I don't know who, I read the kill feed incorrectly, and now it's gone, which is very sad. But the man count advantage is even at 3-3, three, three, and... Your two big clutch potential players in the forms of the Maestro and the Smoke are gone. However, Beezer still being offsite is in a quite a precarious situation, wasting the time of the Zofia down below. Manages to find his way back up the white stairs, even though he is stunned and looks very intoxicated at this point. The swing will come out and Nerve will be able to find him, take an out and reclaim the man advantage as the execute looms. Oh, it does loom indeed. And at this point, Nomads with a man advantage strong but time not looking too strong however with that fall onto nevozo it's just murk left and in a 1v3 with a ump 45 i just don't know if you can even shoot fast enough to take three people down and it'll be shut up by the lovely shot from spiker the iq with what is that i don't recognize the gun if it's not a g2 or g2 g8 <laughs> yeah apparently i don't recognize the g8 either <laughs> you're just shooting the uh, pro league team man just firing out pingus and stuff very fun. <laughs> you just put a really interesting picture in my head of somebody just... photoshopped that. <laughs> <laughs> just a gun, just shooting out newt newts, and it's just <laughs> launching. <laughs> maybe, maybe the new Tachanka rework instead of Molotovs, it'll just be little penguins that explode. Oh my gosh, that'd be amazing. When does that come out? Is that this next season? It should be me? next season, I believe. Wow, that is exciting stuff for Chanka. Yeah, he's essentially just going to be a way better version of Smoke, and I'm not here for it because I love my British boy. I think we'll all always love our British boys. They should start a band, man. Nice little band. 
bomb. I would watch that. That'd be great. I think that's a good, that's a good press thing that uh, Ubisoft should do. Make a make a little music video with all the FPS guys. Start up a boy band with them. <laughs> oh, uh, sometimes, sometimes slay. Sometimes. I know. Sometimes I just say stuff, and yeah, I mean, it's just out there, and you can't take it back. But you know what is looking to be taken back? The loss that they just suffered on Bar Cocktail as homeland goes back to the third floor site, hoping to remedy whatever happened last time. And there was a lot that did happen last time. So let's see if they figure out the correct um, equation, perhaps, to take down Nomads. Otherwise, we could potentially be seeing, like you said, that 3-3 three, three split. Yeah, the 3-3 three, three split would definitely be good for Nomads. This is their map choice. They're comfortable on it. But we also don't know what Homeland has in their back pocket for their potential attacks. So right now, it's anybody's game. There was a lot of pressure over towards Cocktail as everybody on Homeland kind of got taken out with relative ease. Sure, Anarchy had the flash of brilliance on the Maestro play using those nice angles opened up by the buck below to his own advantage. That's the double-edged sword of soft breaching put on full display at the highest degree. But that's not going to happen this time as Snows has decided to pick the Maverick instead. He's got those nades. He's got that wonderful M4 rifle and probably going to be trying to clear out Piano, making sure Navozo's wonderful Magnus and the ADSs of Beezer will be removed with relative ease. Maybe just we're going to see a consulate level yellow take with that Brazilian cliff where there's a bunch of flashes thrown in with a nade right behind it. Could be cool, but a man can dream. Oh, absolutely, man. And Dream Well is uh, currently... My parsec is dying, so I, I'm watching the game at about three frames per hour. So <laughs> keep it up, man. You're doing great. Yeah, so there's going to be a lot of pressure coming out of these windows. These flashbangs are burning away the wonderful my magnets that were employed just a couple seconds ago. That is the utility dump meta that we love to talk about and we love to see. Some more drone work's going to come out, but Navozo is going to fall at the hands of Noodle. A nice angle from the window will make sure that Wumai isn't having any more frisbees come out. And maybe potentially Beezer takes his position in the corner of Pixel, but... Probably not, as you can relinquish some piano control to the attackers if the time is right. And at about minute 15 seconds, doesn't seem like too big of an issue. There's still crossfires here, as both Baited and Beezer are at a bit of a standoff. Both of them at about 15 HP and could be sneezed on from any direction. Probably fall down to the ground six feet under. Absolutely, man. And a shout out to a stone dragon, man. It's the 552 Commando, so that's what it's called. I, you, you just never see it, man. <laughs> Obviously, a little bit of sarcasm there, but all good. 45 seconds remain, and uh, Plant going down from Snows will be nice. HLA does find a kill. Exile onto Spikers. We're looking for that runaway Maverick, but frags keep coming out as Bait and Snows both pull one. We are looking down the barrel of a at least 3-3 half, a potential... 4-2 half in favor of the attackers, which is something we don't really come to expect. A great frag comes out as Merc takes down Nerve, but Noodle's gone. Or excuse me, Noodle's take down Exile, and just like that, Noodle finishes it up, taking down Merc, and that will be all for round number four. Five, excuse me. And they have the... They have the lead for the first time no man's is on top on a cafe attack we could see at worst a 3-3 split for them but they also are knocking on the door of taking the advantage definitively on the attacking side at a scoreline of 4-2 that would really put some pressure on homeland as last time around on kitchen it was the heroics of exile that saved them from sure certain certain um defeat that was the word i was looking for hmm well, let's see what's going to be going on. Big stuff to be happening here is this will be the final round, the last chance. Custer's last stand coming up right now, and we'll see if Kitchen will be the play. I mean, really, every site hasn't looked definitively strong in Homeland's favor. And at this point, Nomads is in a great position to execute and just shut these guys down. We'll see if that's going to happen, and I'm really excited to find out because Nomads have absolutely been firing up. Three rounds in a row have gone to them, and they're looking to keep that up. I'm really I'm really excited. Let's see if it's going to happen as, as Homeland need to figure something out to at least secure that 3-3, and 
I mean, that's not too terrible on a map like Cafe. You mentioned earlier that a 4-2 defense or even a 3-3 is, uh, you know, pretty common. But the 4-2 in favor of the offense is something that will be hard to return from. Yeah, but just as easily as Nomads have been as successful on the attack, Homeland could be just as good. But this time it seems to be a bit of a change. There was a lot of bakery presence last time around. This time they might be pushing the backside over towards the bottom of White Stairs, Whiskey, Christmas Tree, that area here, as well as, yeah. But actually, never mind, I'm wrong. They're going for a full top-down roam clear as Nerve is being droned in, aggressively taking map control behind Baited as they want to get a little bit of vertical pressure going on. That's why Spiker on the sledge is there. He's going to be dropping the hammer and making sure that all of these wonderful angles, all of these wonderful floorboards are gone. Nobody can sit in the power positions that are quote-unquote default inside a piano and start feeling the pressure. Anarchy whips out the nitro cell, waiting impatiently to blow it on up, and yes, he finds it. The golden ears of Anarchy will hear the footsteps of Spiker and make sure no more soft reaching goes on. That's a great pick, man. Fantastic job to take him down. Now Soft Breach is going to have to come in form of different things as we will see Exothermic Charge used to blow up that hatch. Isn't that amazing? You don't actually have to place it on the hatch, even if it's electrified. You just place it to the side and there you go. Kind of OP. I don't know, man. Seems like it uh, defeats the purpose of a Kaid on hatches, but, you know, we'll take it. We like to see it. And now at this point... It's a 5v4 in favor of Homeland. They're definitely fighting hard, looking to get this bad boy going. But, I mean, we do see a couple of guys ready to move in to Freezer. Freezer is a room that can be questionable as Nerf goes down to Exile. Can be a death trap in this little room. I mean, think about all the smoke canisters that would just be locked in and bottled up. It's not a fun thing to look at as Noodle is getting in a little bit of a sketchy situation. He finds himself a nice kill into Anarchy. It's now a 5v3 needs one more to even the man count as they do have access into freezer now but once again that could be a little bit sketchy noodle trying to sneak out get the plant down first of those lovely charges will be thrown out as snows finds one onto exile no more smoke canisters to be seen as the plant does end up going down from noodle bees are looking shut up no it okay it does go down beezer finds one beta takes out another and now it's at 2v2 1v2 as beta takes down to so it's all about beezer in a very clutch situation to keep his team in this at a 3-3 if not I mean, they'll have a chance on, D on offense, but it's going to be very tough for him. He needs to pressure out the guy upstairs. Once again, a very powerful position to find yourself in. But Snow says it is powerful. And for good reason, Beezer will fall to the Thermite, taking the kill. And, uh, well, we've ended the first half at a 4-2 offensive scoreline in favor of Nomads. Yeah, Cafe has been just in a weird transitional period at this time. Like, C3-3 splits. C4-2 defensives, and I guess we're going to see a 4-2 attacking split this time around. Will HLA be able to replicate the success that Nomads have this time? Or are their map choice of Cafe just too strong for HLA to deal with? That's a good question, man. It really is a good question. I mean, I mean, we saw in comments in the chat, I think someone said that, that Nomads just don't lose on Cafe, and it's starting to look like it might be the case. They started off very strong, but... Homeland Academy is nobody to shake a stick at. These guys are hardcore, and I could it could definitely go either way, but Nomads are in a very powerful situation. Switching over to defense, I mean, even if we see that um, expected 3-3 split, Nomads wins. So Homeland has to match the 4-2 in order to stay alive and go to match or go to overtime and in order to win it. Well, that's gonna be a it's gonna be a little bit hard. That's a 5-1 on offense. So let's see how this goes, man. This is gonna be interesting to see as Homeland Academy have a lot to make up after some pretty rough streaks. Four in a row going to Nomad, reading Barbar -Bar Kitchen, all three sites falling to the guys on Nomads now on defense. I'm really excited to see how this first round goes because I think once again it will be quite telling as to how the rest of this game might just pan out. Yeah, it's going to be third floor cocktail, a site we've seen one and one once for the defense, then one twice in a row for nomads on the attack. So with the precedent of 
Third floor being a little bit more difficult than usual to defend. It will be a cocktail. Take his exile, finds the first kill on the noodle. No more Maestro, no more Alden, no more worries on that side of the map for Homeland. Anarchy is making quick work of these wooden hatches because if they don't have a sledge and they don't want to waste a potential um, breaching charge of the Zofia or Merc on the IQ, might have a Claymore, might have something else in the back pocket on the utility side for both of them merc actually does have reaching charges so could have done that but also anarchy probably doesn't need all that extra t gas in his tank to just get the maverick trick on the red wall probably the only breaching that is necessary on this site yeah that's really all you really have to worry about oh my gosh that is oh Magic. no no the nade takes down two oh that feels so bad man exile and anarchy now just disappeared i saw them both fall and oh man you're gonna get your butt shot up a little bit as kite will go down snows in an unfortunate position as we could see this be tied up at a 3-3 but oh my goodness that sucks, man. I thought someone might have yeeted a C4 or something crazy, but Nivozo finds Spiker baited onto Beezer. So it is that three versus two. Almost turned into a 2v2 as Nivozo gets some great kills. A little bit of explosion gonna miss, but that's not gonna miss as Merc finds Nerve. Another kill for Merc, but Prince shuts down Merc with a TCSG, and that'll be a defensive win for Nomads. Looking very strong, but you have to question. Was that just because of the two-man death at the hands of Anarchy's Nade? Maybe. Yeah, I think that was a very decisive mistake coming out of Anarchy. Didn't take down just himself, but also another teammate. Very unfortunate to see two unrefraggable kills at the hands of your own frag grenade. A little blue-on-blue -blue action is never good and swung and completely canceled out exiles opening pick onto the maestro they were sitting pretty they were getting controlled and all of a sudden everything changed when the frag grenade attacked back mm. <laughs> oh man it's true that thing uh came at you straight up man so let's see if this is gonna be a big exactly. round for okay. nomad or homeland because at this point, Nomad is just one round off, taking that match point and putting a lot of pressure onto Homeland Academy. They're two rounds away from the actual win, while Homeland still have a, a little bit to march on. Heading downstairs to Kitchen uh, can be a very strong site. We've seen it go a couple of different ways so far. Once it went the way of the defense, very slimly though, as it was Exile on the Smoke who clutched it up with a perfectly placed yeet of that lovely sangrene arsenic or whatever it's called. We don't know what's in the canister, man. I shouldn't be making gases, right? I mean, he's gonna come get me. So sorry, Smoke, not, not, not saying anything, even though we actually don't see the Smoke presence. So I guess he doesn't even know I'm talking about his canisters behind his back. But gnome, nomads, almost said gnome land. <laughs> Kim combination most ambitious crossover in t3 history is going to be anarchy taking out nerve with the headshot the dot can't quite heal that exile is also going to be able to pick up another kill on division just like that 15 seconds in two kills that's great math for homeland as they put themselves into the driving seat of this round some bullet holes getting opened up as potentially more spawn peaking might ensue but for nomads it's probably not the best decision as now your goyo shield half the utility of snows has been taken out really quickly here but two kills right answering back baited in snows will drop into bozo and merc evening the man count at an even three to three with only 45 seconds gone yeah, that's uh, definitely going to work out for you a little bit at the beginning, but those trades back not feeling too good. Navozo, a great player to have, and Merc, another big fragger that we've seen his name pop up many a time on the kill side of getting kills. So in that 3v3 situation, a great job from Nomads to return from two of your um, little bit of aggressive boys getting shot right off the bat. We'll see if this is going to go. Oh my goodness, Anarchy going to find a great use of the nade, taking down Baited. And, uh, he redeemed sudden, himself. He did. He did indeed. Three kills already for the man. Could potentially go for the ace if he wants to, but ooh, Prince knows in a little bit of an engagement there. What a shot from Anarchy. Gets the triple kill. Excuse me, he cannot get the eyes. Uh, ooh, it's all snows alone in a 1v1. Needs to be able to prove himself. The man's 9-7. and seven. He's so close to getting the kill, but will it go his way? It will indeed. Oh, Academy win the round, and I lied when he said he had the ace. I believe that was a quad kill for him. What a jump from the Maverick. 
Yeah, I, I thought for a second it was just going to be like defending the Alamo for Snows with the Vector, just peeking corner after corner after corner after corner, taking out everybody that swung on him. But ultimately, Anarchy stepped back, took a deep breath, understood the position that he had to be in, just gave a little bit of the of the left-right lean and a couple of bullets into the body of the Goyo, made quick work of him inside Wedding. <laughs> How dare you? Actually, I, I'm not really too opinionated on it, but I'm sure people in chat are just fuming right now. Fuming that you would dare call it that. It is obviously Little Baker Boy. That's what I'm going to start calling it. We'll just make up new names. Every single time. Every single time. <laughs> the Little Baker Boy. Barumpa bum bum. <laughs> Back downstairs the kitchen, though, as you know, that did come down to a pretty close setup. So I'm excited to see if Nomads has what it takes to uh, go ahead and change some stuff up. You lost two guys right off the bat to some pretty bold and brash peaks, and uh, you don't want that to happen again. So we are still seeing the Doc and the Vigil, and I mean, maybe they're going to go for a bit. It takes a little bit of damage, but luckily for him, he does have nerve on the Doc if he needs a little bit of extra HP in his bar. So we'll see if that's going to come to play as, um, man, Homeland looked real good on that last map. Or that last round, excuse me. They look real good on the last map, too. Back to the days of Oregon. Let's see if they can make a comeback, because they're only two points away from tying up Nomads. Anarchy is begging someone to peek again. He will absolutely punish them. But it uh, looks like it's not going to happen as of right now. Yeah, they're still going to be the Rome presence. This time they didn't spawn peek, so that's good for them. They learned from their mistakes and it won't be falling really really early like last time here there's going to be a little bit of passive play from hla as they know these guys are willing to swing anything and everything they need to drone out they need to gather the intel they need to find this vigil probably first off that's on their checklist make sure the third and second floor are secure and yes spiker is on the top of white stairs will probably cloak away and just run to wherever he decides so trying to pinpoint his location corral him into one of your entry frags Probably either Exile or Navozo. Trying to get those initial picks here. Cutting rotations over towards um, Wedding. And getting rid of a lot of the Bakery utility is next up. Probably as well Merc will want to take control of Train. Start using that wonderful hammer to soft reach away more and more angles. As the Execute does loom. Oh yeah. So bees are going to take down Nerve. A nice 5v4 beginning in favor of Homeland Academy. You want Doc off the board is going to be real nice, but you still have a couple of guys to choose here. You got the Goyo, who's firing out now, looking with that Vector 45 ACP. Looks real nice, man. That thing do indeed fire very quickly. Don't know if it go burnt like the G8, but uh, it just may. We'll see how that will go. Bees are looking to push into the bakery, but they don't exactly have total control of it yet. Look at that cam still watching very very carefully is uh they're waiting for it to peek at you but spiker finds exile bye bye says the zofia nice refrag comes out from the k1a wielding vigil and oh man what a death stance that's a great thing about kazer he always goes out of his way to show us and uh, let us pay respects to the fallen i love that about kazer yes he he shows where the kill happened so we can kind of piece together what exactly happened if it's off cam that's what a good observer does wants to give the intel to the rest of you guys sitting at home as well as us to try to relay that on to you so you can understand everything but what is understood right now is spiker is still alive and kicking on his roam with only 30 seconds left he's gonna make his way back into sight and understand that there's a whole lot of players one less towards um small bakery and Big bakery here as Snows gets a kill onto Navozo from the bottom of the red stairs. Now that's one more thing to worry about in the side of Homeland. They know they can be flanked. The Sure, there's an air jab here, but the angles are opened up. Beezer's going to start the plant off, though. There is a Maestro Cam propelling all of that intel as Snows makes his way in. A little bit of trigger discipline, but it's not going to pan out as he whiffs on one. Picks up the downed player. Can't quite get Anarchy as he picks up two. It's a 1v2 situation for Merc, but it is a post plant that he's going to be trying to protect that diffuser with his life. Popping up behind that service rack, that counter for as many kills as he can. But Bait is going to get the best of him. Gets this double kill of the round. Secures just enough time to diffuse, and Nomads pushes to match point. Wow. What a great showing from Nomads, man. They got down. Disabled the bomb diffuser. Unfortunately, just not able to handle it. 
Saw some great rotates come out from the Goyo, was able to shut down the Thermite immediately. And then from there, you had the rest of the guys, you had the Jaeger and uh, the lovely Vigil able to kind of rally him up and shut him down. As now it's match point, like you mentioned, this could be all. And uh, Bar Cocktail has opened up again. So far, they've won two out of three sites and they're looking to make it three out of four. End it right here because if they do it, it'll be over. Remember, all they have to do is get that 3 3 split and they win. So, this is the only only thing they have to do is just win one site before we see three more wins come out from Homeland Academy. And we'll be going to our final map of oh boy, forgot what it was. Consulate. Where are we going? Consulate. consulate. Okay, I thought it was consulate. It was consulate last night. So, I was like, am I just thinking about last night or is this for real? Consulate a pretty fun map though, so I'm okay with going to it. But I mean, Homeland Academy, they really need to pick something up if they want to go to overtime because not going to be easy. So what I've noticed so far is Homeland seems to be stalling in their attacks a little bit. And that's something that Nomads have properly read into. Because if you look at the right of your screen, that is a utility dump lineup if I have ever seen it in my entire life. Jeez. You have a Jaeger and Wamai to eat away the explosives. There's no Ash on the side of Homeland. All they have is that Zofia for the ranged projectiles to possibly destroy Goyo shields, regular shields, or castle barricades. Also, even the Maestro cams, if they're in a very advanced position, giving away intel, possibly towards Piano or over up as the one we just saw on the top near the bomb chassis. Yes, there is one in Piano. So there's a lot of things to get rid of and not a whole lot of projectile utility on the side of HLA could bite them in the butt. As like I said, they've been stalling on their attacks a little bit. So Nomad's just going to be like, okay, we're going to make you stall even more. Get rid of our utility before you even dream of coming towards site. And it's going to be very, very difficult for them. Oh, absolutely, man. That's really good of you to notice and really good of Nomad's to notice too, because I mean, they're playing directly into their weakness, and it has been so far, just the inability to shut them down. They get stuck in the middle of the round, and they just usually run out of gas, just like Maverick does quite quickly, man. Look how fast his little tank burns out. Poor man needs to bring extra next time. But you know what? The man had to pack what he could, and that'll be all. Ready to take a little bit of uh, peaky peekies here as they are trying to get some advantage of real estate. But you see those shots coming out. There's a man holding two shields we've got prince snows as well as spiker chillin <laughs> both of those guys who are absolute magnets for uh for different utility not to use a pun or anything but this is going to be real tough for homeland to break through and i mean that's a lot of bullets potentially coming down your way yeah homeland needs to do this quickly they need to get their clear down packed and look as good as they looked on Oregon last time around. Like, they're, sure, there was the 20-second meta. They sort of waited, then exploded onto site. But that has been lacking so far. One breaching charge will open up a nice angle from Cigar Lounge into Piano, putting more pressure on the Pixel players. But Prince is hiding behind a shield and can just jiggle in and out as he pleases. Just crouch, spam, pop up, put a couple of hot shots over towards that area. Maybe net a kill or two if he's lucky. Yeah, and uh, so far Nomads have been, I, I wouldn't say lucky, as they did get that unlucky uh, double smoke kill a while ago. So we'll see how their luck will stand up. Nate being checked up, looks like it was, was it eaten or will it go down? Looks like it was eaten indeed. So, I mean, yeah, there's a lot of utility that they're going to have to burn through. And chucking a nade in early is definitely not what you want to see. Is it, well, my magnet will take another and, oh no, how are you going to take the shields down at this point? With 40 seconds to go. Everyone's still up, but you're going to have to see an absolute powerhouse of a take without really gaining much control of anything. This is not going to go well unless they can find nice shots like that. Beautiful pixel by Beezer finding the top of the head of Baited. Bye-bye, Goyo. But Goyo already does his job, man. He's got the C4 in the back pocket. Sure, and Beezer are going for the plant here. But Noodle finds Merc, and uh, looks like XL takes down Spiker. Another great frag. Snows finds another, but Beezer immediately onto Noodle as it's just back and forth. Now a 3v2 situation as another falls. It'll be HLA looking to secure it all. It's just Snows left in a 1v3 situation. Not exactly what you want to be in. As, I mean, we're seeing great executes. A beautiful shot from Snows on Nervoso. But that was perfect from Homeland to be able to just kind of circumnavigate the situation and uh, get in here. A lot of pressure, and just like that, Anarchy finds the final kill into Prince Snows, and 
Well, that's a great round for Holland, and they stand one step closer to making this a comeback to overtime. Yeah, overtime is still a possibility, but Nomads also have two more chances to close it out in regulation. They have the option to go to reading. They can go to third floor. They can't quite go back to bakery yet. And yes, we will be seeing reading room fireplace being put on display for the first time on this Nomads defensive half. And this is a look that we haven't quite seen come out of them. There's probably going to be a very similar line um, setup to what we saw HLA employ. Big, heavy third floor roam. Make sure that all of that soft breaching cannot go down as there's just a whole lot of breaching charges, maybe some breaching rounds, no traditional buck or sledge. But if you know the correct angles, you don't necessarily need to open up the whole floor. You can just open up some of them because like we saw a couple rounds ago with Anarchy, he used the holes that the buck created as a double-edged sword. That can happen on any site, and that's one of the dangers, especially when you also have a nitro cell on Noodle who could just toss it up and use a little bit of golden ears, hearing footsteps, predicting the movements of a soft breacher, placing a big slap, I mean, a big slapping brick of explosive goodness onto the roof, clicking a button and making that soft breach go bye-bye. Oh yeah, it, very quickly that can happen. Yeah, so it is a pretty powerful site when it comes to that. I mean, Cafe doesn't really have too many sites that are, are really bad. I, I mean, cause, uh, cause like you said on this one, you might lose control on the third floor, but I mean, that's not even sight yet. You just have to worry about the soft destruction that you can easily conquer with, like I said, the C4. So, um, Cafe definitely can be very attacker sided, or excuse me, defender sided. Good grief. Just contradicting myself here as uh, some nice wall destruction comes from Snows himself, getting things all opened up nice and airy as it's time for Homeland Academy. They have to win two more rounds here in a row to secure overtime, which has been done before, has been done many times before, but will it be done here? Because like you said, Nomads have a great chance to, even though they lose here, they get to go back to any of the three sites. They can go get to Kitchen, and heck, I mean, there's more than just that many sites. There's, there's mining they could go to, which we saw come out from Valkyrie twice that actually worked really well against Powerhouse, and that was uh, pretty fun to watch because according to JJ, teams just don't know to attack it. So would we see a potential mining dining i i don't know because it's really not played often and if it was teams would know how to attack it so maybe jj is trying to keep that under the table but i mean there's a lot of options still for nomad and if they can just figure out a way to shut homeland down within these two rounds then we go to map three of consulate just like that yeah we're actually going to see a very interesting attack come out of hla this is actually what ssg does on their attacks if you watch any pro league they don't care about the vertical pressure that Nomads wants to employ. For the defenders, you want HLA to come to you. You want to have the advantageous gunfights over towards Cocktail, but you also, if you put a lot of utility and a lot of players up there, you're leaving Train and potentially Dining very exposed as Merc gets the first kill onto Spiker. That's getting a little bit over aggressive towards the Heaven Peak and punished accordingly from the bottom of Pillars. If you put a little bit of pressure up top, all of a sudden they start getting worried, they retract a little bit, then boom, you have sight control. You can breach that Pillars wall just like we saw Beezer do right now. And Anarchy picks up a second kill onto Noodle and you can start putting in pressure and killing the more traditional anchors and open up make it a retake situation for the roamers upstairs and it's very very difficult if you just cover angles such as exile does right here he's going to be able to take out snows all of a sudden it's just nerve and baited in a 5v2 a very well executed attack as Navozo takes out nerve it's a 5v1 clutch potential do or die will bait it have enough in his gun to take out five players maybe but it's going to be a lot easier said than done on this retake he's going to drop right on into the laundry room and boom just like that third kill for anarchy and a flawless round for homeland yeah that is a real nice Great job there from homeland academy staying alive and in a fin phenomenal fashion as well nomads are uh, getting a little little sweaty palms here as they haven't had a streak in a little bit of time. And right now, Homeland Academy is on their streak. Heading to Kitchen Service. This was a good sight back in the days when we saw it first on round nine. Or I guess we saw it first on round eight, and then they went back to it on round nine. That's where Nomads first won the site. This will actually be our third time seeing the site during this rotation. 
interestingly enough, on a nice rotation, you'll usually only see twice for all the bomb sites. But here we go to Kitchen a third time looking to shut Homeland up. But will they be able to do so? I just don't know. Because Homeland has been looking real good for a little bit now. And Nomad's slowly slipping off. We've seen some great things from both teams. But at this point, we very well could be going to overtime. And it could happen just like that. Came very close last time. But these opening picks... That HLA you're finding, you saw Spiker get a little bit too aggressive on that peak. He went down for it, and was that one of the big reasons they ran out of fuel? You left your poor Wumai in a 1v5 ace clutch situation that just was not going to happen, and you cannot allow that to happen again. We are seeing a similar setup to when we last went to Kitchen. Hopefully they're not going for a big peak, because that could be a big mistake as well. Yeah, Homeland is just too... Their eyes are too acute. They're too ready for that sort of aggression. Your aggression needs to come a little bit later in the round, potentially with a big flank, as we saw Snows do a couple of times over towards the small bakery wedding area. Spiker's going to open up the windows just so Homeland feels the pressure. They know that they have to roam clear out Spiker in order to be successful on their take. And having your position be known is going to start the attackers worrying about you. Right, just like this, Exile has to repel up. They have to start putting pressure up here, and that's going to eat away on your clock. Yeah, the clock will begin being eaten at indeed, as that is prime role of roamers. That's what they do. Now, at this point, HLA have a couple of different options. They can really just try to force their way in, which, uh, ooh, Bade's going to get burned a little bit. My boy's getting, getting posted from one of the Goyo shields that was indeed popped. Is There's no Goyo. Excuse me, there's no Capital, but there is a nade coming out from Anarchy. He's made up for his uh, blunder back in the day. And another from Nevozo. It's looking like we're headed to overtime at this point in a 5v3 situation. Is possible for Nomad to come back. We've seen him before get great frags and just even up the man count. But, I mean, will they be able to? Already, you've lost your Goyo as well as, uh, well, your Doc 2 now and your Jaeger. It's just not going well. Anarchy on a bit of a triple kill looking for the quad here as he just will not stop at Spiker in a 1v5. Once again, they're threatening the flawless round twice in a row. What has happened to Homeland? They have just come alive. And at this point, Nomads just doesn't seem to have an answer. This is getting rough. Yeah, you're going to have to deal with air jabs, and Bozo still has one in his back pocket. Could just cut a rotation into sight and burn away even more clock, because right now the attackers have control of it. There's crossfires galore over here, as Spiker just kind of knows he's not in a great place. As Exile says, just give Anarchy 19, please. Spiker might just save the KD no. because of that one. Ooh, but Anarchy's coming for him, and Anarchy finds it anyway. What a job. Exile says thank you. And a flawless round goes back to Homeland Academy. What a job from Anarchy. Picks up at his 19th kill. The man is going off and we head to overtime. It's round 13. Our first overtime of the night. And uh, it, it could be our only overtime of the night if Homeland continues to be this successful. Both teams have fought really hard. We saw Nomad on a four-win round streak, a four-round win streak, rather, when they were on the attack, but they're still on defense here, and it hasn't been going the way they wanted to. Back to reading room. This site, they got flawless round on, but so did they on Kitchen. Right now, they have no safe site to go through. All three of the sites, they've just lost. So what are they going to do here? I mean, typically, starting on the defense for overtime is an advantage, but is it here? I just don't know. Here, the only way, I, I'm going to assume that Homeland are going to attack in a very similar fashion. They don't have any soft traditional soft breachers, so that's very indicative to me of, yes, they don't want to take cocktail control. They're going to let the defenders have it. They know, okay, that's not sight, so why do we need to pressure it? We're just going to do the same thing again. They don't think that Nomad's necessarily read into they want to push how they did. They know that Pillar's Wall got opened. They know that um reading door was highly pressured by anarchy 
but they probably might not know to the exact extent of where the aggression is supposed to go for this attack. A traditional attack would be, we're going to flood in through mining, we're going to put pressure that way, cut off all of these rotations as well. If anybody wants to sit in that, that's going to be their final meal. Oh yeah, people could uh, be eating their final meal a whole lot for this round, and here we go, the attack is happening, and look at all the guys from HLA coming in. There's four of them right there with XL on a little bit of a different angle. He looks to be going in right there by pillars, but he'll continue up to the top of the roof, perhaps feigning that they're taking a lot of control up here. That might be the idea from this player, but actually there's quite a few up here now. Are they going for that traditional third floor take, or will we see, once again, that absolute rush into the site and just hoping to take them down? We might see limited defense up there if Nomads did read into it, and that could provide ample situations for them to go ahead and uh, blow up the doors and take the floors down. Let's see which is going to be the case. You do have Nerve and Baited both playing up here, so there's still a little bit of presence, but they've definitely not allocated so much RAM to this project here, and they're trying to make sure they have enough in the tank to deal with whatever Homeland pulls and they need to be able to play a little bit more conservatively. We've seen Spiker get taken out so quickly, and that is a huge pick for the team. Anarchy already at 19 kills shows that the man is going off, as we'll see the laser of Nomad's air jab shoot out a little bit. It's time for about half the round to be over. Yeah, and like we said, Snows actually did make a very good adjustment. He understands, yeah, they want to come in through excavation, so I'm going to put a Valcam here. I'm going to get a lot of intel for my team potentially for a flank down red as well as recalling the upstairs room maybe a little bit earlier because the bottom of pillars is the main point of contention as exile is going to rotate inside of train nebozo is going to try to cut some of these aforementioned rotations upstairs maybe somebody's going to get a little bit over aggressive or not really know his location because there is still that pressure. That is a castle, there's a Wamai, and there's a Jaeger all up inside of Cocktail. Anarchy's gonna be breaking some door barricades, giving the sound cues that's gonna block up and allow Navozo to swing out and take out Spiker. Really good synergy coming out of the team as Snows has dropped downstairs and could go for a Nitro Cell. But Beezer's gonna take out Noodle. Baited will answer back onto Navozo, but it is a 3v4 with the Diffuser going down. Merc's gonna fall evening the man count as Snows has that red flank on lock. And, but the diffuser is down and it's in a pretty safe location. It can be watched from pillars. It can be watched from anywhere. But at this point, the defenders have become the attackers. All of these HLA players are inside the site, holding the same angles that defenders would. And it's up to Nomad to try to take it out. Anarchy is going to be able to take out Nerve, but Prince Nose gets another kill onto Exile as Baited also falls. Anarchy, he's going to swing out. He's also going to get Beezer as he picks up the triple kill. Stops any clutch potential here and gets the defuse down with a few seconds to spare that is absolutely huge for nomads what a fantastic win in overtime as they will place themselves now in a good situation they're going to match point in overtime in their favor and at this point it's gonna get a little sketchy for homeland we've seen them be able to really really shine in tough situations but will they be able to do that here because they are gonna have a chance to defend but both defensive sides were four twos for the attackers. And uh, well, that doesn't exactly bode well for the defending side at all. And uh, kitchen service, let's look at the, let's look at the, okay. So it is one, one, they went there twice when they defended the first time they won for HLA. The second time it was nomads who took it. So going back there, definitely, uh, you know, a, a respectable choice, but they need to be sure to really work about this hard. <laughs> let's see if that's going to happen. <laughs> Forget about the nades, says Spiker, because, uh, I mean, if you add those two kills, the man's at 22 right now. So, I mean, Anarchy, definitely a very powerful fragger, and he's playing more of a, a little bit of a support role on the Maverick. I mean, I suppose he is can be pretty hardcore, but, I mean, they have had him traditionally on a little bit more of that support role, but he's still fragging out like nobody's business. Yeah, he's a very flexible player. We've seen him play all sorts of different operators, and he's been successful on all of them, just as we're now seeing him on the Kaid. He's got that AUG in his hand, pretty much just a way better version of the UMP. So, 
just everything the UMP aspires to be, but plus a little bit of fire rate and a little bit of damage. Plus, those Electro Claws are going to be in conjunction with Navozo's Mute Jammers to stop any of that breaching from going on, to make sure those hatches are nice and locked up. But we also saw... Actually, no, there's no Thermite. It's going to be just Maverick tricking on the hard breach side of Nomad. I was going to say we also saw the circumvention of those Electro Claws via the nice little quote-unquote Thermite trick. You can just place that charge next to the hatch, and it'll blow up just the same. It will indeed. I mean, it do go boom, and we've seen that before. Pretty OP, man. They need to nerf that, or maybe they don't. It's potentially game breaking but it really isn't it's been in there for a long time so we'll see how they use that to their advantage uh merc ready to go on defense he's playing the castle side right now and uh we do see a pretty big pressure coming in at the bakery side as well as look at the man watching into wedding as we do call it <laughs> he's ready to go too a lot of pressure coming out from homeland already and uh look at the maverick starting to make his a uh, little bit of potential kill holes here not really going for the trick rather just placing a little bit of pressure on anyone sitting in prep trying to hold that down the attack has now wasted away about a minute and here's some traditional use of the maverick now opening up walls he's not really used for those peak angles much anymore he's more so what he's supposed to do that hard breacher and uh, he's doing a good job of it right now that's what anarchy is known for the man is absolutely phenomenal and at this point nomads can you shut him down here, or will Homeland be able to take it to max overtime, double overtime? It very, it very may well happen. Let's see. I mean, it would allow Anarchy to possibly get more kills. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I'm sure HLA wants to continue in the fight, and they have to win this round. They're on the defensive, but the wall is also open, as well as... A also some really good angles coming out utility burn will flash away some of those ADSs that Beezer did employ and he's pushed all the way back into the A bomb site Spiker's also going to be placing a breaching charge opening up the double door sure it's muted but if you move it a little bit to the side it will work just the same Baited and Spiker now have a crossfire onto the bottom of red and yes there's a couple of players out here nerve takes out Beezer no more Jaeger what a shot coming out of him 4v4 is Merc is going to be able to find Nerve too, but baited back onto Merc. It's a trade. It's tit for tat at this point. And it's a three. Make that a 3v3 as Nervozo finds Spiker. However, Nervozo very low on HP, under 25, but baited not looking too good. Neither is Snows baited down as well. And this is looking like Homeland's round. Noodle will be dropped too. And we are indeed CNAPs going to max OT. This is getting a little bit crazy. Yeah, that's what we like to see. We hadn't seen it in a little bit. The double SAS, Exile, Navozo, Wombo, Combo, SMG 11s in hand, ready to take any gunfight that Nomads could have thrown on him. And at this point, he did. They just popped heads like grapes with that SMG 11. Sure, it has recoil, but if you hit your first shot, that doesn't matter because it's Siege. <laughs> it really doesn't, man. That's the amazing thing about Siege. I really like it. Just... The potential of dying in one shot just keeps you on your toes a lot more when you're playing it. It's very slow paced at times, but also we've seen Homeland Academy back in the days of Oregon execute within, what, five seconds, everyone is dead? Insane. <laughs> so yeah. it's just, there's such good variety in Siege, and I think that's what makes it a great game. It's so tactical, but there are also times where you just need to have, you have like the pure skill of fragging out, and it really is one of those great games to watch, and we certainly have been blessed tonight with some great Siege. However, it might not end. Nomads have won their defensive side once on overtime. They're looking to do it twice and take us alongside themselves to consulate. But Homeland Academy went 4-2 attacking on their uh, attacking half. And at this point, it could go either way. We look at the history, though. Kitchen has gone HLA twice, Nomad once. So you got a 33.333 repeating chance of winning historically but I mean, that can easily change. Nomad just have to switch a little bit of a little bit of things up, and they're ready to go. And they did change it the second time to win. So if they're able to adapt well, they very well could win out here, and we could easily be going to consulate. 
Yeah, console, it does loom off in the distance depending on how this last round comes out. I'm sure if you're in Anarchy Shoes and you've dropped 22 kills, you don't want that to be a loss and have all your effort be for naught. Yeah, we'll, we'll say it's 22. I, I like saying 22 because of the two TKs. <laughs> so, in ranked, he would have that beautiful triangle next to his name, probably <laughs> as I believe it was Nervoso wouldn't want that to happen once again. But they're also going to have to break down a very similar hold that we've seen Nomads employ pretty much every time. They have some, a lot, not just some, they have a lot of horizontal pressure. As well as Spiker isn't even on the top floor Rome anymore. He knows that HLA doesn't really want to deal with him and will bypass him. So he's gone down to the bottom of the white brown stairs. And his, his elbow shows just a little bit. He's going to get tap, tap, tapped away by Nervoso. Great accuracy to find that little bit of pixels on here. And just like that, Spiker only has 50 50 of the HP you should have. Oh, yeah, not a great start for Nomads here as Homeland wants to show. Oh my gosh, Anarchy is great with the nades. Finds another one as Snows goes down. He's going to be immediately. Due to it, too. Nevozo falls as well. The man's hitting headshots like it's nobody's business. Escapes with about 25% of his life total left. And now it's down to Exile, Beezer, and Merc to take down a very, very tough situation here as Noodle's fully HP'd up. Exile takes down Baited. The Doc doing some great work as Spiker will as well be joining his brethren in over 75 HP. 3v3 is, um, this could be very, very close and it's very, very fitting for a max OT round 15 matchup between Homeland and Nomads. Nomads desperately fighting to take us to a third map while Homeland look to shut it down 2-0. This is gonna get crazy. And right now, Nomads on the defense have a little bit of advantage as time ticks down, but there's still about a minute to go. Plenty of time for the offense to work something out. You'll see those evil eyes pinging out people, but it's Exile to take down Nerve. Another Spiker goes down from Exile. It's all upon Noodle at a 1v3, a clutch situation. He'll be fired upon. And just like this, it's getting so intense. He will be shut down. And just like that, Homeland Academy win 2-0 in a very tense and very close matchup for round or map number two. Fantastic job to them and what a great night for Siege. What an effort coming out. We're gonna say 23 kills for Anarchy. What a <laughs> performance. And five of them were nades. Two on him and actually he might have gotten even more nade kills. He got a lot of them with that utility. Frags are explosive. And those were definitely explosive kills that opened up the aggression coming out of HLA. They understood, yes, we can push with the advantage that we just got. They put their foot on the gas and never let up. And with that, that's our series for tonight as well as the whole stream. But just wait before you click off. We should have an interview coming in for you guys from the HLA side. Us casters are going to have the opportunity to get inside the brains of one of those HLA players get a little peek behind the scenes and understand what was really going on inside of comms. So if that sounds exciting to you, make sure to stay tuned right after the break.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. And yes, we have an interview here because the first series of the night went into the hands of Homeland. And I'd like to be the first one to say congratulations on your win because we're joined by Anarchy. Thank you. Thank you. So, picking on... We can just go and start at the beginning. Sure, it was a two-map series. You guys won 2-0, but why not start at the beginning? That's the best thing. So, Oregon. It was your guys' map choice, but you got to start on the defensive because of an ambitious nomad choice on their side. Was there anything in your comps that were like, why did they do that? Did that confuse you at all? Or was it just kind of, oh, yes, I get to... <laughs> we get to defend on overtime and regulation. <laughs> yeah, we were we were a little bit confused because I mean, Oregon still a new map. Of uh, everyone is wanting that defense side because just you know defense rounds are so easily won because um, no one knows exactly how to attack it yet. So what we saw that we were getting that we were able to pick it and we actually get defense for two. We're like, oh, well, we got this one in the bag, and yeah, we came in there with a lot of confidence and we got the job done. <laughs> Yeah, and your confidence definitely was on display for the first four rounds. You guys won pretty handily. However, Nomads did get their foot in the door just a little bit on the back end of the half where they won two in a row. Was there any specific reason for that happening? Was there something that was going wrong? Was there something like that? Or was it just Nomads playing good? Um, I think on both maps, uh, we actually ended up winning the first rounds on our defense. But I think Nomads, they were, they were actually able to adapt really well to our strats. And... Um, you know, adapt to our, you know, point out our weaknesses, and they, like, made sure to attack our um, our weak spots of the strats because we didn't bring out many strats today, um, and we just stuck with the same ones And because if it worked, we just, we just did it again and hope it worked again. But, yeah, they were actually able to adapt really well, so I think that's where their rounds came from. And, of course, small mistakes here and there, you know, that cost us a few rounds. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I have to give some credit to them for adapting really well there. Yeah, they were a very adapt-heavy team. Like, they didn't really... If you gave them the same look twice, they were able to adapt. But it's also, mm -hmm. do you just want to stick with it? And it's like, oh, if it isn't broke, don't fix it. I understand from your guys' perspective. But I think the strongest you guys looked on Oregon were on your attacks. Was there something that was going on? At first, I was like, oh, these guys are going too slow. Then it was like somebody called out in comms. You you, you snapped your fingers. Boom, you guys were all <laughs> in sight and killing everybody. <laughs> um yeah so i know exactly what you're talking about the basement one um <laughs> yeah that basement push uh it's it's been a real beauty to us um here recently and we've just recently been able to you know practice it get some get some experience of it under our belts and um you know it's paid off in the end um you know it takes a lot of teams by surprise at how a like how fast we're able to execute with them very little time left now switching to cafe wasn't the best start for you guys mm -hmm. was there something that went on in comms that really brought you out of your lull just a little bit because you guys um, made it you made cafe look attacker sided for both sides yeah uh our defenses were really rough on cafe i mean um i know personally i got good nighted like literally two times in a row three times uh, i mean so nomad shot for it they, they were on um with them you know the attacker guns i don't know if that was it but I mean, they were hitting their shots on um, attacking. And then the Monty, um, we had some issues where we couldn't stop the plant from going down. Um, just from, you know, bars not being open, especially on third floor. That was, a, that was a slight issue in our prep phase that we weren't able to, you know, actually win the round off of it and it costed us. But, I mean, yeah, Nomad, Nomads, I mean, it was their pick. They were ready for it and, you know, they, they came in swinging, so... Yeah, it was definitely a really close map that you guys were ultimately able to edge out as you got, I'm going to say, 23 kills. As <laughs> I guess what, I just want to know what happened in the Discord call right when you let go of that nade and you realized it bounced off the ceiling. <laughs> so I'm actually proud of the boys a little bit. Um, <laughs> I think it took everything, Michael, um, or Exile, it took him everything not to say anything right after it happened. Um but, I mean, we actually almost ended up winning that round, too. So, I think um, our mental ability, even, like, when something bad like that happens and a mistake happens, that we were our, our mental was actually really well. And we were able to, like, come right back from it and even almost ended up winning the round. You know, um, Merc didn't see the Kaid prone. We thought he was actually downstairs. That was what the call was given. Um, so, a slight call, you know, costed us the round that time or the, you know, nade, um, the double kill. But, <laughs> but yeah, I mean... I'm I'm really happy with how the team you know adapted to how a mistake like especially with the one of that like 
you know, big could how we came back from it. All right, so I'll transition into the more fun period of the interview, the last bit where we're going to take chat questions. There's somebody with a sword next to his name known as Cherish underscore VCU wants to know your favorite caster. Oh, come on, Cherish, man. Man, I, okay, look, I got to go with CDAP, Cherish, man. Like, I, mean, I mean, I'm ready to see Connor in real life. Come on. I can't do that to him. Come on, Cher- Cherish, you know. You're, you're, you're my second, then, man. Um, Slay, big respect go out to him. I love Slay, too. You know, all the casters around here. All the love is being spread around evenly. And now next answer, I guess you kind of already talked about it. Exile asked, why did you kill me? <laughs> okay, so what happened with the nade? Um, well, we we knew the Kaid was stuck, and I got called over to nade him. We've done it in scrims before, and it went well. We got in free kills off of it. But Kaid was actually peeking when I went to go peek and throw the nade. So I did, I pressed on my A key just a bit. So I want to give him an easy headshot. I got a little bit, got a little bit timid, if you could say. Um, and yeah, and apparently I hit the A button too much and it hit the, hit the edge of the window. And, you know, I was cooking it for a while. So it immediately blew up and, you know, took out me and my good friend, Michael. Yeah. All righty. And so the final question is actually one of your other future teammates in the form of D1 Taco. Are you looking forward to being the face of collegiate? <laughs> Um, man, I don't know about the face. Uh, I'm really looking forward to meeting all of you, though. Um, and like getting to getting to meet you guys in person and stuff, and being able to hang out. It, it's definitely gonna be a fun, and I'm so ready to for that experience, guys. Alrighty, and that's all the questions I have. Unless you slay have a question, dude. Honestly, no. I mean, um, fantastic job tonight. You guys battled hard. But anything you want to say to like the rest of the teams up here in Champions League? Um, I mean, we're definitely, we're definitely on the lookout for the rest of the teams. I mean, I know definitely, um, we're looking for that Valkyrie camp, that Valkyrie game at the end of the, at the end of the season. We're ready mm. for that. Um, awesome. but yeah, I mean, I just want to take the time to say sorry to Michael, you know, officially. I mean, I know he was pretty heated, so. <sighs> Alrighty, and with that, that, yeah, <laughs> with that, that concludes our interview for tonight. Big thank you to Anarchy coming out, and congratulations to everybody here. This is the last map of the night, so we will be closing our stream, but we will also be back on Monday at six e- um, central, not Eastern, six central, with some rival series action. So make sure to stay tuned for that. I've been Seed Apps. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. I lagged a little bit there. But uh, you know what, guys? As we say goodbye, don't forget to enjoy Kazer's lovely artwork. I know I enjoyed watching him make it. So until next time, peace out, guys. It's been fun.